What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guys, Cody and Derek here, back for another episode, guys. Here we go. We are going to talk today about some underrated players on this Indianapolis Colts team. I feel like, Derek, there is a good amount of players that we could consider underrated, so we couldn't pick just four of them, at least together, so we had to create our own list. There's a little bit of overrun, a little bit of overlap, and a few players. There's also a couple other players as well that we feel like needed to be mentioned, so we are going to have two separate lists of four different players that we are both going to talk about, um, and I assume in no particular order we're going to talk about these guys, because we didn't number these guys, um, and take it as you will, we're just going to talk about, we feel like these guys, in whatever order you want to place them, are four guys that are the most underrated players for the Indianapolis Colts. Now, when I think of underrated players, Derek, I think of players that have tremendous talent or have done a lot of things for this team moving forward uh, or in the past and moving forward. And so, and, and nobody really gives them the credit that they're due, right? When you talk about some really good players on the Indianapolis Colts, these players aren't typically in the conversation or aren't a whole lot of the conversation. There's some other players that are a little bit more well-known for the Colts, but we feel like these players are still play key roles in this team and in their, their success if they want to go far here in 2022. So I will let you start with your first guy here, Derek, on your four guys, who you think are the most underrated. Who's your first guy on the list? Well, I mean, I got to go with my guy, Isaiah Rogers. Okay. We've been talking about Rogers a lot as one of those up and coming players for the Indianapolis Colts. And, you know, we really haven't really heard a lot of people talk about Rogers. We've been hearing people talk about Stefan Gilmore, right? And obviously with this little controversy going on with Kenny Moore, everybody's talking about Kenny Moore right now, but nobody's really talking about Isaiah Rogers and the progress he has made throughout the few years that he's been here for the Indianapolis Colts. And, you know, to be a six round corner coming out of UMass and now, you know, having that opportunity to be that true number two corner outside corner for the Indianapolis Colts and not only to win that job, but to be a relatively good player. You know, I mean, it says a lot about what Rogers has been able to do and you know, his skill set and what he can provide you uh, fits exactly what you want in a corner. And I'm truly excited to see what Rodgers can do because I think his uh, I think his potential is a lot higher than what a lot of people are willing to see or understand how high it is. Yeah, that's why I like when James Bradbury became available. Obviously, we wanted him as a good player, but also in the back of my mind, I was like, if we don't get him, we still have Isaiah Rogers, who I really love as a player, you know, and he's come a long way. You talked about since being a six round rookie in 2020, you know, in, in first, his first year, more of a kickoff kind of specialist kind of guy, more of a reserve corner. But last year he really stepped up to the plate, especially when Xavier Rhodes, you know, was dealing with those injuries and stuff. Isaiah Rogers started to carve himself out a role, a really nice role as kind of the number two corner alongside Rocky Sin last year. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for him now in year number three with a new defensive scheme, um, with just his skill sets, his speed, obviously. But his ball skills are just amazing. Like, he, And nobody talks about it enough, but like Isaiah Rogers is just so smooth when he's in the air. Like This dude is just an athlete, and he's really gotten a lot better. Um, and now working with guys like you know, Mike Mitchell, for example, um, and some of those guys back there in the secondary, I think it's going to serve him extremely well working alongside, you know, obviously him and Brandon face on right now competing for that number two outside corner spot. But I think he's going to probably win that. And I think he's going to learn a lot from a guy like Stefan Gilmore on the other side. And I think he's going to be the perfect compliment, right? Cause Gilmore's a little bit of a bigger corner than as Isaiah Rogers is right. Isaiah Rogers is more of that speed kind of guy. So I think they're a nice compliment, a nice duo moving forward. So I'm excited to see this, these two guys working together alongside in tandem with Kenny Moore in the slot. Um, and I think Isaiah Rogers, you know, really important piece for this team and really a piece nobody's really talking about. He's also on my list here. Um, but the, another guy I want to talk about here, Derek, staying in the secondary, I, I got to talk about Julian Blackman real fast because, you know, it's really cool to see that he recently has been, you know, participating more as a Colts of Open mini camp and things like that. He's starting to participate in seven on sevens and things like that. But 
I kind of feel like Vasily, he's kind of been not forgotten about, but we don't talk about how good of a player Julian Blackman is. You know, the injury last year was devastating. I mean, we all saw the big gap that was left when Julian Blackman went down last year with that injury. But I think a lot of times we we can look at all the other players on this defense and forget that Julian Blackman, his rookie season, wasn't even 100% healthy. And he was out there making game-changing kind of plays, right? You think of the Minnesota game. When he came back, wasn't even supposed to play till about midseason. He comes back and he forces – he didn't get the turnover, but you know it's a key part of one of the big turnovers in that big win – you know, other things that he did, the Green Bay game when he forced that fumble, you know, and countless other things, the Cincinnati Bengals game, the Cincinnati game ceiling Bengals interception. Game, the Chicago Bears game where he gets the yeah. game ceiling interception. Same there's so many. In Cincinnati. Yeah, there's a lot of those. So many. So many key things that he did, you know, and I, I've said before, kind of Darius Leonard-like in that secondary, just whenever you needed a key play at a key moment, Julian Blackman seemed to come up with it. He seems to have a nose for the ball, so... Uh, really excited to see him, and I don't feel like we're talking quite enough about Julian Blackman, and if he's healthy, his impact here for this team in 2022. Yeah, I mean, wh- what can you not say about Julian Blackman? I mean, again, this guy was, I mean, if Chase Young didn't have a, as amazing of a rookie season as he did, I mean, Julian Blackman was going to be defensive rookie of the year, and and it wasn't close, so I mean, Blackman has shown from the get-go, you know, what kind of player he is, right? I mean, the Colts fell in love with the player that he is, with the ball skills to be able to play in the back while also running up and making those great tackles. You know, we see, we remember the first game, uh, I think it was in 2020, when he played against Tennessee and had a couple good tackles against Derrick Henry in the backfield. You know, I mean, just he he's the kind of player that really just opens up a lot of things for your secondary, both in being aggressive up front and also being able to cover in the back as well. So, I mean, it's it's this defense is going to benefit greatly having Julian Blackman back. I think a lot of people, you know, we talk about the corners last year being hurt quite often, and that was the big issue. I think the safeties was the biggest one, and you know, losing Julian Blackman was the worst one because. Julian Blackman is your, uh, like you said, he's the Darius Leonard of the secondary. He's your turnover guy. He's your big play guy. And he's the guy that can free, uh, that can just float anywhere in the secondary and just make something happen, you know? So that's, that's what the Colts are really looking forward to getting back this year. And you're right. Not a lot of people are actually talking about Julian Blackman that much. Not saying that anyone who does talk about him saying he's bad, but in the fact that, yeah, we're just not talking about Julian Blackman anymore because we keep talking about guys like Stephon Gilmore. We divert our attention to the defensive line and we talk about some of the depth that's been added to the secondary, but we're not actually talking about the really good stud that we have at free safety. And that's Julian Blackman. Yep, and I know he made your list as well. Who would be your third guy then, Derek? All right, I'll get I'll get flack for this, but I don't care. I I I live for that. So I'm going with Paris Campbell here. I think just from the sake of look, I know a lot of people will say you can't be underrated when he never sees the field, but I'm simply stating that there are still people that don't understand when he actually is on the field, the kind of impact that he actually provides for the offense. Again, I know, understand he has not played very many games in his first three seasons, but we have seen when he was out there on the field, every single time he has made an immediate impact on how that offense moves. We saw it in early 2020, he was getting targeted quite frequently by Phillip rivers And then sure enough, his knee got blown out this last season when he was out there, even Carson Wentz was able to make some good throws to this guy and he was able to make some big plays for the Colts in key situations. So, you know, this is, this is a guy that truly, I believe is underrated, not and underappreciated for the uh, person that he can be on the field. Again, I know Colts fans have pretty much just checked themselves out at this point talking about Paris Campbell. I have not, so I don't care if if 90% of the Colts fan base just says, oh, I don't really care about Paris anymore. I mean, that's just checking out on somebody that could legitimately, if he plays 13, 14 games this year, could potentially be one of the best offensive weapons we have. 
So I think at the end of the day, him being underrated is definitely true because our, our own fan base just doesn't oftentimes understand the player that he can be if he remains healthy at any point this year. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, one guy I had, I didn't have Paris Campbell on my list, but one guy I did have that you did not have is Bobby Okereke, right? And kind of a similar conversation to uh, Isaiah Rogers in the fact that he's not the number one guy, right? When you talk about the Colts linebackers, you talk about Darius Leonard. Let's just be honest. You do like he, and for a good reason, he's the maniac, right? He, he's the face of the Colts defense, but Bobby Okereke, I think quietly had a really nice season last year for the Colts at Mike linebacker started off a little slow, started off not as good as everybody hoped he would, but I felt like he kind of started to come into his own as he got more comfortable as the full-time starter last year. And I think nobody really talks about kind of his ascension last year to being that starting Mike linebacker. Cause there was a lot of questions for Bobby Okereke last off season. Like, is he going to finally take that leap? Cause we felt like his rookie season, he looked really good. We were really excited. Second season didn't really do as well as we hoped he would. And then last year, he stepped it up. I feel like he did. And I feel like he cemented himself as the long-term piece at the Mike linebacker position. And, you know, he's already making plays here early on into this offseason. So I'm excited to see, okay, does this change of the guard in terms of defensive coordinator and the, and the scheme a little bit, does that help a guy like Bobby Okereke out, you know, who's still very young, who still has a lot of opportunity to grow, and I think is a really talented linebacker. So I think we just need to talk about him a little bit more. Nobody really does when talking about the Colts defense, but I think he's going to be a good key piece for this team for the long term. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Bobby is, I mean, he's been my guy, right? I've been saying it. You and I have been uh, back and forth with the uh, Bobby Okereke and Kari Willis uh, love for each other there. So, you know, we've been back and forth on it. I hope that uh, he ends up taking that next step in that pass coverage role that we've kind of seen a little bit of here in OTAs and minicamp to start. Hopefully that is something we go into. Now, I know the last person that we have here on this list for each other, they're both offensive linemen, but different names. Uh, and I think mine is more of that hidden gem argument. But at the end of the day, I think, again, people are just not talking about him. And that's Danny Pinter. Uh, I think what we saw in the four games that he was uh, utilized last season for the Colts and actually, I think it was more than that, even when you look at the end of the season with all the injuries and COVID problems that they had. Uh, he was probably in for almost half the season last year. But Danny Pinter has shown, you know, he's been he's been picking up the reins really well for the Indianapolis Colts. And even being on the inside, too, you know, he's not a he's not a very big offensive lineman when you look at it from a size perspective of many of these other people, but he does a really good job of holding his own does a really good job of run blocking. We saw in the Texans game where he first took over for Ryan Kelly last uh, season, you know, Pinter being alongside glow and, and big Q. I mean, he just, he just moves people and he does really good job of, uh, working alongside those guys and, you know, being next to Braden Smith this off season and getting to learn from Ryan Kelly as well, I think is going to really do wonders for Pinter because mainly he's just been that backup guy, but I'm very intrigued to see what Danny Pinter is going to do as a starter at right guard. And, you know, just nobody's really talking about him right now. Nope. Not a whole lot. Uh, you mentioned Braden Smith. He's my last guy here because nobody talks about Braden Smith ever. And I think he's consistently been a top 10 tackle ever since he's taken over. And nobody talks about it. Nobody really talks about Braden Smith and what he does. We talk about Big Q. We talk about Ryan Kelly. Heck, we talk about left tackle a lot. But we don't ever talk about right tackle. And I think Braden Smith's done such a great job where we don't even consider talking about right tackle. That's how underappreciated he is. You know, and... and I don't know. It's just, it's fantastic. I think he's just such a fantastic player. Um, and just, to, it's so cool to see where he has come from, from his rookie season to now where he was drafted, not even to be a right tackle, right? You remember that you know, the Colts drafted him to play guard and you know, there was a, because of some injuries and some crazy things, he was thrown out there at right tackle 
And he has not relented since. And he has been one of the best tackles quietly in the league. And nobody talks about it. And I think that you cannot underestimate a guy like Braden Smith. Now, some people will throw out the argument, well, okay, Cody, what about last year when Braden Smith went down, right, and Matt Pryor stepped in at right tackle? Let's just call it what it is. The Colts got lucky with Matt Pryor that he turned out the way he was, right? I mean, Braden Smith, on any other occasion, if you don't have depth, it's going to be a significant drop off from what Braden Smith provides for you. I mean, he's one of the better tackles in the league, right? When he's out there, you don't have to worry about Braden Smith, right? He's in, he gives me the Anthony Costanzo vibes in that way, Derek, where nobody talks about him, but he's consistently fringe top, top 10, I think, every year. And I just think he deserves a little bit more of that respect. He's a quiet guy, doesn't really talk a whole lot, uh, but. He has quietly been one of the best offensive linemen for the Colts in the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Braden Smith, you know, I think a lot of people have kind of, I think another thing with you talking about the underrated argument, I think a lot of it also has to do with just the fact that he didn't play a ton uh, last year. And I think that we oftentimes forget, you know, he has been the guy that has been constantly picked on by opposing defensive lines when they're putting their best edge guy on Braden Smith. And that was the thing early in his career. His first two years, I mean, he was always getting the raw end of the, the stick there. He was always the guy that was getting uh, the hardest matchup because he was the inex inexperienced guy. You know, and that's what you want to do when you got an inexperienced tackle. Doesn't matter how highly rated he is, you want to try to test him. You want to see what he's made of. And, you know, he's always been a an average to above average right tackle in his first few years. And then I think it was what 2020, he didn't allow didn't allow a single sack, and he was the only offensive lineman on the Colts to do such a thing. So, I mean, not even Big Q uh did that in 2020. So, I mean, that's a that's a huge uh accomplishment for him and you're right i mean people are just not talking about him much right now and uh i mean i i'm hoping that this time around if he just doesn't get hit with that freaking injury bug like he did last year then hopefully we see a much cleaner side of that right side of that line this year and i think we will he's been pretty durable last year was just a weird kind of freak thing i think with braden smith but for the most part he's been a very durable player um and he's been consistent in that way so uh yeah excited to see what he can do here for the indianapolis colts but guys that'll do it for our look at some of the most underrated colts in our opinion let us know your thoughts are there any other players that you would add to this list that we maybe missed we didn't talk about let us know i know there's some other guys that could potentially be thrown onto this list as well but that's our thoughts on it and thank you guys so much for tuning in really appreciate all your support and as always guys go colts